You have stumbled upon or perhaps intentionally ended up here at my podcast, Actual Lee. No matter the path that led you here, I hope that you will hang out and join me for a truly enjoyable conversation. Let's get started. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to Actual Lee. It's my podcast. And uh, we are here with Dr. Steven. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we met on on x formerly known as twitter forever twitter and forever uh, yeah i just thought we'd jump on and chat and say hello and share that with you guys so nice to talk to you kind of sort of in the real world here yeah it's like we're people we have faces and things i know right yeah. <laughs> so um how you doing like how's, how's your Good, week how going my body is being an asshole this week, so I'm not having like the best ride right now. But otherwise, I'm okay. Like, oh, you know. I hear you. It's uh, I was over at my friend's house the other night, and he has old sentimental tables and chairs that his parents gave him, and I ate shit and fell right off of one of them. And no. oh man, it's just like the fall is fine. It's the impact that sucks. And it's like, it's, it's like, once you get up, you know, you do the self inventory. All right. Nothing's broken. Nothing's bleeding. And then you wake up the next morning. You're like, Oh, get the license plate of that truck. That hit me. Right. Yeah. It doesn't just, we don't bounce back the way that we used oh, to. No, no, no. That's for sure. <laughs> So you said sentimental. Do you mean like literally like sentimental stuff that his parents gave him or is sentimental a style? Uh, sentimental that his parents left him. So he's really kind of holding on to that with the last thread. You know, the table's wobbly. You can only put, tighten it up. So everything stripped down. The chairs were suspect. <laughs> I was like the fourth victim that it's claimed in the last <laughs> year. So it's like we're, tr <laughs> we're trying to get him to go shop it on Facebook or... He needs some caution tape on them. <laughs> uh, the caution tape. And uh, they were actually going to put like the, the chalk outline of where I laid it on the floor <laughs> or it happened with me. And I'm like, that would be hilarious. I would definitely <laughs> share that with you guys. <laughs> yeah. that I vote for that. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love the idea that like these this furniture that's like has this sensible mental value is also basically like a trap. It's a it's almost like a oh, horror yeah. film prop, right? It, it could be a new Stephen King book. It's like yeah. the, the table and the chairs love Steve love the other Stephen who run you know who invites us over, but anybody else who sits there out. <laughs> That sucks. It sucks though that you had to get hurt to to make the laugh. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was mostly my pride, so I'll take it. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I have this thing like we live in a in a townhouse of stairs, and I don't. I haven't spent very much of my life in a building with stairs, except for you know maybe like a front step. And every time I go down the stairs, I'm like, I'm gonna fall. Like it's oh, like yeah. this thing that, in that my head never leaves you. I, I know yeah. exactly what you mean. It just, yeah, my housemate, he looks at his phone while he's going down the stairs and I keep being like, don't, you're going to die. Just do, I do not want to have to <laughs> this, pick you this up. This is the like, final <laughs> destination thing that is going to happen to you. Please do not. <laughs> One of my best friends growing up, he lived in a one story, like cabin style house. And he came over to our place one, you know, one time for dinner and asked to use the bathroom. And he was like, he was like, I'm not used to this, you know. Steps were the only thing that, you know, you, you had him at school and that was it. He came home. It was all one layer. So, yeah. Yeah. It's if you're not used to it, it definitely. Uh... <laughs> Plus the cats, the, they don't help. They're like a whole oh. secondary threat level. <laughs> like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, lo they love to just just run right underneath your feet as you're stepping. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the one cat, he's black, and so he likes to lay across the steps, so he looks like a shadow. And then my oh, other yeah, cat yeah. literally just attacks my legs, like yeah. just full-on bear hugs them. And I'm like, we're, if I fall, you're coming with me, sir. That's what I'm like, saying. We're, we're both going, this is a team effort. <laughs> you, will, you will not get to eat me because you're going to be underneath me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Yeah, so you mentioned the doctor. The doctor part was related to D and D stuff. So yeah, um, and tell me more about that. 
Talk about I, your D&D I, stuff. I, I just started it. I'm a noob. I'm 52 years old and I just started <laughs> playing last December. I mean, I've heard of it and known people who've done it and stuff. And I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. And then it was like my one friend, uh, he, he said, hey, I'm thinking about starting up Dungeon. Would you be interested? I said, I know nothing about it, man. He was like, that's all right. And he brought like three other people that were the same. So it was just like, it was all kind of a learning thing. And he really kind of held our hand and walked us through it and stuff like that. So now I'm 11th level, man. I think I'm the, I think I'm the shit when it comes to that. So as I, I know, and then it's like, I watch like critical role. It's a YouTube uh, channel. And I'm like, I'm I'm like, I, there's no way I could even compare to these guys. And (laughs) I still got to have my cheat sheets and I got to ask, Everything, uh, when you want to ask questions that don't pertain to the game, you got to go uh, above the table. That's the phrase that they use. And yet I can't tell you how many times I've uttered that phrase because I was completely lost. Yeah. That's good. You have a DM that is uh, there for the learning part of it, too, because that, help, that helps. Keep oh, it oh fun. he's a sweetheart. He, he's very flexible when it comes to, uh, you know, bending the rules or he'll kind of nudge you in a direction. Like if he's doing the story. <laughs> A certain Are you way sure you want like, to do that? Yeah, you sure you want to do that? Because, you know, you're standing in water. Do not cast a lightning spell. I'm just saying, you know, he'll he'll do that. You know, he'll ultimately let you pick your fate, but he, he n- definitely nudges you in the right direction. Yeah. I was supposed to join a new campaign that's starting soon that my son's doing because he, he DMs a couple different campaigns. But um, I decided I'm going to wait until the next one just because of... All my health stuff, I don't want to impact the flow of the campaign. Like if I have to have surgery, I might need like a month or whatever. And I just don't want to sure, do that. Yeah. So I was like, you know, we'll see where I'm at with the next campaign. But I, I am still looking forward to it. And I'm planning on um, going through like and kind of learning the system before that point. Because I, I played when I was much younger. Like the first time I played, I was like 12. My mom was playing with uh, her her. uh buddy that she she uh, got some you know stuff from and uh, sure. uh you know so i played then and then i i kind of got into it and played with other people that i met on the motomine community the local you know the local one um but it's like that was like like first or second gen dds you know like 88 or oh, yeah. 90s so it was you know and then i didn't really play much after that so it's totally it's so much more complicated. The system is, yeah, like so many more rules and ways to tweak your oh my, characters. And, 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 you know, I thought it was just, okay, you got seven dice or all different sizes or whatever. And then it's just like, once you gain all these extra act, you know, attributes and everything, and then, okay, well, you got to roll five D sixes as your multiplier. Then, a, you know, a constitution throw. I'm like, oh. it's, yeah. it's a lot to remember. It, it's definitely a learning process for sure. Yeah. And the the referencing, like you're like, you got to go to this part of the book to look up what to do for this part of the character development. And then and that part is not for me. My ADHD doesn't like doing that. And so it's Uh, like I'll be like I'll start getting like confused, Um, you know, so I have to uh, there are websites that have laid out in a more direct way. And that works. That works a lot better for me than jumping around in the book to look at different things. But um, what kind of, um, what's your class and all that? Uh, I am at, like I said, 11th level uh, Dragonborn Paladin. Okay. You, you went for having a little magic and stuff? Went for having a little magic and I have a redemption arc uh, that I have to pursue. So I thought that was a cool aspect of the story. And uh, I'm kind of the de facto, non-de facto leader of the group just because of where my morals are and where I stand on the side of good versus evil and greed and stuff like that. So that kind of appealed to me more. So that's why I chose him. Are you like, um, I don't know how the, the moral stuff works out. Is it like chaotic good or, or are you like, uh, uh, yeah, chaotic is what we say for our partner. He's the rogue and he's like, <laughs> a pick, he's like a pickpocket and he is an agent of chaos. He will, <laughs> and you could be in the middle of a battle and he'll come up behind you. Like he's trying to help you. And steal your coins and steal a valuable key that you've been carrying around. Or if you're, you know, getting ch- like I was getting choked by a Balrog type dragon and he tried to steal my sword. Um, 
Terry, help. We're a team. <laughs> help, then steal. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, you know, I, I said it to him. I was just like, buddy, I, I love you. I hate your character, but I, but I love you. I was like, please. <laughs> it's like letting he's letting out some uh some parts of himself that don't come out normally oh he has some demons i don't know what i did to him in a past life or something i don't know what happened but he, he definitely takes out some aggressions that's for sure <laughs> yeah i always went for like the chaotic neutral so i could just kind of do whatever i wanted and not have to follow any any yeah. kind of roles or something but you know i don't know i have no idea like the last character I made was for a campaign we started like two years ago, and then it didn't go very far because there were personality issues. Uh, but um, I was a goblin, and I I like rolled so well that like my when I told my son the stats, he was just like, "What? Like, <laughs> yeah, like whoa, you know." So I was pretty bummed to like lose that character because I was like, "Oh, my stats are so good." <laughs> It's more like a goblin than a goblin, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> Having some coffee. Huh. <laughs> Didn't want to be rude. Here's my. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not rude to in ingest some stuff. Yeah. What is that? Is it energy drink or beer? No, this is coffee. Oh, coffee. Okay. Coffee yeah. in the service mug. Uh, nice. Yeah, couldn't have went by quick enough. I just saw like a label, but I didn't know what it was. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a teetotaler when it comes to stuff like that. I'll social drinker. I'll have one or two if I'm out, you know, even when I'm with my friends. And I mean, it's only a 15 minute drive to where I go for the campaign every Saturday, but it's not worth it, you know, yeah. just to have the two or three beers just sitting there having fun and get pulled over for that. It's just better off just sticking to soda or whatever and yeah, save the drinking for the holidays, I guess. Yep. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't drink at all. It's just not really, I don't know. Just, I mean, never, I did like never really been um, my thing. Yeah. And it was just like, it was my birthday back in March and I was just like, ah, I'm going to cut loose. It was on a Saturday and it was just like, I woke up the next day. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> why would anybody want to feel like this constantly? It just, yeah. Uh, yeah, just not very appealing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's pretty much even when I was younger, I didn't because I would always be like, even if I didn't drink a lot, you can still feel the impact. It's, it's a little bit of a depressant it's like, and it's, it's like, yeah. yeah. And I I was like, you know, I don't really I don't really like that. And honestly, like. Coffee for me, I, it hits me different than it does a lot of other people. I don't know if it's ADHD or just whatever, but I would go out like to like a social thing, like a bar and have coffee. And I was having more fun than everybody else. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was just and it's like the caffeine doesn't bother. It doesn't even phase me. Like yeah. what I, I used to work uh, the second shift uh, at, my, at the one job, they'd have a full pot. I could drink a full pot in an eight hour shift and just be all right, going home, going to bed. They yep. were just like, how do you do? I was like, I'm just built up a tolerance over the years. So, yeah, I didn't I didn't start drinking coffee until my like 30s. I just. Oh, wow. I, you, never got had in, it. you got in the game late. Yeah. Well, every time I had it, it put me to sleep. I'd just be mm -hmm. like. So when I was a teenager, I was real bad at sleeping and I would just be up for like, you know, two days or something. And then I would just go to 7-Eleven, get a coffee and then I would go crash for like two hours. And yeah. so that was part of it was it was it slowed me down. And of course, now I know that that was that was because the ADHD. Right. So when yeah. I went to get evaluated, I was like, well, coffee makes me sleepy. And he was like. That well, right. that's, you know, and time. then and then when they gave me the ADHD meds, I was like, man, I've been sleeping so good. And he's like, yeah, that's yeah. Are you. <laughs> Definitely ADHD then, because you, yeah. you take stimulants and they put you to sleep. Like <laughs> it's just like so relaxed. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I miss my meds. I haven't had them in like a year and a half or something because of the shortage. And then yeah, all my my the thyroid stuff. You can't if you're like hyperthyroid, you can't take them. It's not safe. So I'm just waiting for when everything mellows out. I'll go back, get back on my my routine good yeah. get my dopamine mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah
Yeah. So you're in uh you're in Pennsylvania, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Well, is that like where you're you're from originally or Oh uh, yeah, born and raised. Okay. I had uh I just I said the word Pennsylvania a whole bunch of times in the last couple of days because uh, I had a friend who when I was younger, his family is from that area and then they moved they moved out here and um it was just like I just for some reason ended up talking about him and so then that stuff came up and then I was like, Oh yeah, you're from you're from Pennsylvania. I don't know yeah. what part or anything, but yeah. about fifty miles south of Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. I've heard Philadelphia is pretty nice. It is. It's a beautiful town. I was just up there last summer and uh yeah, it's fantastic there. Yeah, I haven't been there. Been to a lot of places in the US, but uh, that area in general I haven't. It's more like coastal coastal stuff and okay. desert. I've been to lots of desert places. Yeah. I like the desert. <laughs> Just uh it's so pretty. I don't know. I mean, everything's pretty though. Everywhere I go, I'm like, this is so pretty. So I think I just, I just think I like stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really have like a list of questions. I just sort of converse. So you know, I'm just sure. yeah. But uh, so I don't know how hot it is here, but it's killing us over here. It yeah, was another. Heat, it was another heat advisory today. Yeah, I saw like a one of my friends that's in the UK actually posted a image that was like where what the warning levels are for the different parts of the US and I wasn't aware that it was that bad over there but pretty extreme. It it actually we were like at about 90 every day um for like 2 weeks which is warmer like we we tend to fluctuate cuz we're right by the ocean so it was yeah. weird that it was kind of stuck there. But it just cooled down a couple of days ago. Um, so it's been like 80, which is, of course, that's great. I'm not, I ain't yeah. complaining. Even though my room is a lot warmer than that, I'm not, I'm not complaining, especially with the fires and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause with, with the fires, it makes it where you can't always open your windows to cool things down. I don't have an air conditioner. So um, I'm v- very glad that it hasn't been as hot. Um, it will yeah, get there again. I'm on the I'm on the second floor, so it's like I have to have it. It's just you know if it's 80 degrees outside, you can easily add another five to ten degrees in here just from the heat yep. rising up. Yep. It's terrible. Yeah, my room is upstairs and it's sun facing all day long, oh. so it's like it it know. would be like yeah, it'd be like 90 outside and it's like 95, 98 in here, and I'm just like. And I did try, we have like a portable AC, but it was throwing the breaker for the upstairs, like the whole upstairs. Uh, and and that, that's the other thing too. It's just like living on the second floor. It's just like, well, you want to eat, but it's like, you can't run the microwave. You can't run the stove because I have electric, electric yep. stove up here. So it's like, if I, I have to turn that off and then it essentially just screws up everything when i had the air conditioner on for four or five hours if i'm running the oven or running the stove because then it just gets hot up here again yep yeah it's it's uh yeah i couldn't really figure it out because it wasn't throwing it every single time and the the air conditioner has a like a gfci thing on it so and it's not throwing so i think it's just the wiring in the the building maybe there's something going on but i I haven't reported it yet because I feel like they'll just be like, don't use the AC. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they, yeah. They, they go for the uh, work us smarter, not harder aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. But I I did get a swamp cooler that someone sent me. And um, for it's dry enough here when it's hot. It's like it's humid, not humid like it gets over there, but um, it's humid enough. It wouldn't be useful when it's cooler out. But as soon yeah. as it gets hot, it dries out. And then I can use the swamp cooler. And as long as you're sitting right in front of it when it's running, it's super effective. But it's funny because yeah. you like stand up and you move out of the way of the the breeze where it's pushing that cool air. And all of a sudden it's like you're just hit with the like heat and you're like, whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah, it just hits you like a wet dish rag. And it's just yeah. uh, terrible. But it's like with the swamp cooler, it's about 15 degrees cooler in front of Ooh, it. That's nice. Yeah. So I can't complain about that 
Um, and it's it costs as much as running a fan. There's no like, yeah. You know, oh, it, that's nice, but it doesn't cool the rest of the house or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So do you uh, play video games or? I used to. I was kind of like the old school Atari, Nintendo, Sega Genesis guy. As soon as it went up to like, you know, the PS3 and the PS4, I just, I couldn't keep up. Yeah. I, my, my, my kids love it. They play it all the time. And it was just like, I bought an old PS3 just to play the old games that I couldn't find it, you know, in a compilation discs or whatever, the Sonic the Hedgehogs or Resident Evil, stuff like that. But yeah, I, I can't call a duty. Ugh, I can't. Yeah, I don't like I actually don't enjoy those kind of repetitive run in and just shoot people games. I'm yeah, well, I'm a loot fiend. I, I'm like, I don't mind running around shooting people like Far Cry and headshots are very it's very pleasing. But yeah, sure. but the looting is, and and that story is like all of that's like a big part of it for me. So like um like I played Counter Strike back in the day, but it was I got bored with and all this like Call of Duty and stuff, they're all the same kind of same kind of vibe, you know, like it's not my thing. I, I mean, I'm glad yeah. other people like them, but I just, you know. And yeah, to each their own. It's like my one buddy, he tried to he tried to get me into it. And it was like I took the tutorial or whatever it was to, you know, learn how to throw grenades or pull your weapon or do this or do that. And I'm like, you, you guys got to remember, I grew up, there were three buttons. That was, you know, that was <laughs> it. You know, if that and this, you, you want to see how far back, you know, the old Atari had one button. Yeah, and there right. Was no, <laughs> and there was no end to the game. It just got faster until it beat you. You know, it's, there was no end end cinema. There was no hey, congratulations, you made it. And it was just like no, Space Invaders like, went on for hours. Yeah, like kaboom. You're just like exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I you know I like I liked gaming when I was younger, and I was into it. But I liked you know like Warcraft two was mm -hmm. one and and starcraft and stuff and then um some others but after my son was born it was like all about him so then it was oh, yeah and like, that's the way it was and that's the way it was here it was like once my kids were born i was just like oh, i can't spend you know eight to ten hours a day doing this stuff and it's like i mean i i dipped back into it every once in a while you know when it was you know when the kids were asleep or whatever and i fired up the old ps2 and played that stuff but yeah i just when you work in front of a computer too for eight to ten hours a day the last thing you want to do is sit down and focus some more while you're on you the know, screen yeah <laughs> and it's the same yeah. way i can't watch tv either it's just you know when i'm done working that computer goes off it's like i'll put on youtube and listen to it or a pod you know podcast or whatever like that or just you know go through my alexa and play that but it was just i just you know, a TV is just a bigger computer monitor for me. I can't shake it. And it's like <laughs> yep. what I've done. And it's like that I hit, you know, out of my shift. It's like it's not physically demanding, but it's just like it just mentally you you have to be at your peak performance for eight hours, taking down all the information and doing this and doing that. And it's like you mess up something, you know, that it's bad for us as a company, but worse for whoever, got, you know, God forbid. What if I get a, you know, a number wrong for somebody in the hospital who needs, you know, something to, you, you really got to just pay attention. And when you got that laser focus for, you know, like I said, eight to 10 hours, the last thing you want to do is be like, oh, I sit here and watch True Blood. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I really care. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, it's funny. I when I stopped working um, after my health stuff kicked in, it was like 2014. I just. um I quit like I, I quit all the social media stuff like Twitter, yeah. all of that. I just stopped. I mean, Twitter, I thought it was so negative at that time. I just was like, eh, anyway, but um, and I just I just completely disconnected. My phone went on silent and it has not come off of silent since then. And it was only like the last like. Like two and a half, three years that I kind of started to come back to. And it's been slow. Like the social media was like, I started on one and then like added another. And then I've started making content. But I, yeah. it's like I needed, you know, I needed all of those years of like quiet away from stuff. Cause I literally was like, 
got in front of a screen when I was like 12 and then I never looked away. And it was like, because I learned how to socialize through BBSs. So all my social life was there. And when the World Wide web came out, it was like, I, you know, it was like live journal and all that stuff. And then, yeah. and then I did it at work too. You know, I was always in front of a screen at work. So it was like, at some point it was like, Nope, uh, I need a break. I can't do yeah. this anymore. And the one thing I never really did was watch TV. I just, yeah. I was sick. I was sick for a couple of years before I started watching tv um and yeah it was like we had a tv so my son could play video games and that was that was kind of it yeah need that break so and now yeah, like, and like I, as you know and i was transitioning from what i used to do for 20 plus years and then going through my medical stuff and you know basically have to learn a whole new trade and a whole new way to earn a living and and stuff like that it's just you know that wears on you too mentally and yeah. physically yeah i just saw that it was like i mean it's like whole, like when your health changes the landscape of how you function your routines and stuff that's uses so much energy to adapt to and it's like you can spend years feeling like you're in kind of the wrong life wrong I'm, body you know I'm, i i still haven't recovered it's been what are we two it's been eight years for me so mm -hmm. it's like it's still, I still get those weird phantom, phantom pains and stuff like that, that I used to have, you know, being on my feet for 48, 50 hours a week, or I still get that weird, you know, oh my, I, I, you know, I overslept, you know, cause I was used to work in the morning shift that it was like every once in a while, I'll wake up in a panic at like six o'clock in the morning and be like, oh, I got to get dressed. Oh yeah. That's not my life anymore. So yeah. Yeah, I, it took it was I think it was about six years after that job before I stopped like kind of expecting to get in trouble for not being online. <laughs> like because yeah. I bought I had a I had a just a very toxic work environment and I was there for like five years mm -hmm. and it just it was like it just got ingrained and changed the way that I interacted with the world around me, even outside like work. Like I started becoming like like having a hard time with confrontations and stuff, which yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't really had that before. And I had, he had told me that I had too much personality and that I needed to like tone it down if I wanted to raise and stuff like this. And I've never, I've always been like, like my jobs, like I've literally had managers be like, yeah, I call you into meetings because you're like, you know, you give us like humor, you make us laugh during the meetings or whatever. Like, you know, I've always been appreciated for my personality. And in this job, I had too much personality. It, and and like, it basically only the guys can make jokes. I wasn't supposed to be funny. And uh. I'd, ne I'd never run into that before. I've never, I've always been one of the guys. So I was just like, it took me a while to process what was happening. And by then the damage had already kind of started, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just like, the hell man and then now i like feel like i've started to heal from that but it's still kind of there like every now and again i'll have like this mental hiccup you know where i'm like oh i'm gonna get in trouble for something that i just posted on twitter oh, yeah. and, I'm like, I'm, and then i'm like yeah. why the fuck do i care i don't care <laughs> and it's just like and i'm very fluent in sarcasm so it's just like <laughs> you know when you're typing out stuff on twitter you know that's sometimes hard to convey across to other people you know because it's just like unless you got it it's like all right where's my emoji board all right here's a yep. winky smiley face okay jk or you know whatever the yeah. kids say and it's like you know but if you hear the tone of people's voice that it's like oh okay you get it but yep i always use emotes to help convey um like tone i think that i think it's like i know some people are like oh you know emotes or whatever but i actually think it's important because we rely on it so, i mean we evolved to need body language as part of yeah. understanding and intonation yeah, exactly. and stuff so so why wouldn't we replace that when we're using something that doesn't have have that right so yeah i like the like the sideways tongue out one for sarcasm like, right <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> although i have a friend if i send that to him he always says something perverted back to me and I don't, well, that, yeah. I don't say that to him anymore. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the risk you take sometimes with that stuff. And it's, <laughs> it's just like, no, I didn't mean it that way, but all right, you ran with it. So, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, no. <laughs> and, and your DMs are flooded. You're like, God damn it. <laughs> another thing oh. I don't feel like dealing with. 
I am so glad I haven't had to deal with that. I know it's very common oh, and yeah. it's never, it's, I've never even gotten a D pick. I've said this before and I, I, it's like, I'm very proud of that. And I hope that it remains. It's just, wow. it, I don't know what it is about me that puts people off and makes them think twice about doing that. But uh, I, I am absolutely okay with it. But to be fair, yeah. if I did get one, I am going to Photoshop it and share it publicly. So maybe yeah, they yeah. know that, like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's a modern day scarlet letter. You just put that out there and it's just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I mean, so happy know, you're I, proud of that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just I, I've never heard of a solicited dick pic. I've, I've talked to dozens of women on Twitter, and I was like, "Have you ever just asked for one? I mean, have you ever just out of the blue said, hey, you know, pull him down? Let's see.' No, and the answer is always no. So I, I don't. It's some yeah. kind of a chemical imbalance that it's just, oh yeah, I'm just gonna do this for you and see how you react. And it's just like, what's yeah. the end game here? What are you expecting? It's well, yeah, it's a, that's a complicated can of worms there in terms of the like why that's a thing, but you know, it's it's yeah. it's very interesting. Like, but yeah, I, I I actually I had a guy friend who said that um had a woman basically demand one, and he was wow. like, he was like, yeah, I don't do do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was like it's almost like the people who who want it they don't find the right people like they don't everybody find, keeps yeah, it. <laughs> it's, it's literally it's literally like the immovable force and the, and the unmovable object coming in and show it to me no wait a minute what <laughs> exactly it's supposed to work out yeah but she was younger and i'm wondering if that's part of it you know because you have like the younger generation has sort of grown up with certain like things being sort of normalized whereas for those oh. that are older even like selfies if i'm if I'm like texting with someone and they start sending me selfies, I get uncomfortable because it feels very intimate. And I'm it like, does. I'm yeah. like, why are you sending me this picture? What is the context for it? But to them, it's like, they're just sharing. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah, okay. I get that. But, it, and in the natural flow of things, like if somebody takes a picture of someone, like if it's organic and it happens that way, I can appreciate that. But, you know, when people like deliberately, like they're the ones where they're lying in bed and it's just like, oh, I'm so tired. Okay, you're tired. Sleep. I'll take yeah. the picture. <laughs> exactly. you, know, yeah. you can be using your time so much better. Just yeah. Stop. Yeah. I'll occasionally be out and about and I will take a selfie where I'm pulling a weird face because there's something happening in the background. And I have friends I send that to, but we all do that for each other. And it's there's that's the context is it's funny. Right. But yeah, yeah I've I've had people like like where they're messaging me and we don't know each other that well and they, they're sending me selfies of them like hanging out in bed and you can see like their wife in the background or they're like and I don't I'm like I don't know what the why do I want to see them in, <laughs> yeah. you know like I mean, it's not as vulgar as the d-pics or anything but yeah at the same time you're just like okay why it's yeah I just end up like because I don't understand why I just start like not texting as much and kind of get quiet because I'm like I don't and yeah. I have and I have found that when I ask why, um, I don't get an explanation. I get defensiveness. They, yeah. just think it, they just think it's you have to do it. I deliberately we were in a text thread for my D D group. And my one friend who thinks he's funny, Lee, he is not. It's just he thought it was funny just to put this certain gif up there every single time. Whether or not it demanded it, whether or not he thought it was, it's kind of like that. That's what she said. Uh -huh. If it's put, if it's put in a certain circumstance, it's funny. But it's just like you know, if somebody's coming in and says, you know, uh, "Hey, can you help me push that chair in?" That's what she said. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It's not right? funny. <laughs> and he would just put this this gift rage. That I, I literally dropped out and started my own thread with the other four guys minus this one because I couldn't take it anymore. It just disrupted the whole flow of everything <laughs> that was going on. Like the DM would be telling us stuff about what was going on. And it ruined the Lord of the Rings for me because it was a character for that movie. So now it's like I, I get like unjustifiably angry now every time I see Legolas <laughs> on the screen. Just, you got PTSD from it. <laughs> seriously, I, I can't. Because it was just like, he's like one of my best friends. So, got, you know, you got to take the, it's like a marriage, I guess. 
but it was like when he kept doing it and I kept saying, you know, that's really annoying. You know, just stop. <laughs> I said, it's not funny. Well, that's the point. I said, okay, so your point is you're, you don't want to be funny and annoying. And I'm just like, well, I, I like poking the bear. I'm like, I don't like to be poked. I said, it's real. I said, the other guys aren't saying it. I'm saying, and he just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And yeah, that's, that's it. I just, that's, he uh, just, yeah. He thinks he, it's that Andy Kaufman, do you remember him? Type of comedy where it's just like, there's no punchline, there's no funny. It's just, okay, I'm going to be as annoying as possible. Something that I think is funny or two other people in the world think is funny for shock value or whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> The difference being that with Andy Kaufman, you opt in by turning the TV on versus yeah. having it forced on you by. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it's like um, it makes me think of like like if I if I make a tweet and I'm like, I don't like thing um, like I don't like being told what to do. That would be a good example. There will sure. always be at minimum one, but usually more than one person who responds, basically making the joke. It's not really a joke saying, basically telling me what to do, going against the thing that I just said. And they think yeah. it's funny and it's not funny because I've just set the boundary. And it's the same thing when you tell somebody, hey, you know, the thing you're doing is not funny. Well, and they keep doing it. At that point, yeah, they've just completely disregarded yeah. how you feel like. And I'm yeah. just like, I just block people now. I'm just like, no, you might yeah. be a night person, but no. Yeah, and and the whole thing of it is, and it's just like it's the whole thing of uh, the whole mansplaining thing. I've seen that one done to death too, mm -hmm. where they're just like, guys, you know, why do you do? It's okay, it's rhetorical. They don't want you to. They don't want you yeah. to give them answers. And they're just this is their way of just screaming into the void of getting it out there so that it doesn't, you know, eat them up inside. And then yeah. and I'll tell you what, man, they line up and just well, that's, here's that's what, why here's I, <laughs> I label <laughs> shit rhetorical question. Cause yeah. I hate it. I hate it when people like try to answer. I'm like, I'm like, do you actually think I don't know the answer? Do you have any idea how many sociology and psychology books I have read? Like, <laughs> you know? it's just it's like, just... I've read all these books. I, I doubt that Alibaba 575 is going to crack the code <laughs> and uh, tell me, tell me what's wrong with me. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, oh, man, <laughs> I used to have this friend who, um, he was very kind of sheltered and he was a really nice guy, but he was like trying too hard to be a pervert. So like he would like every time anyone said anything, he go <laughs> get it like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it didn't always work. It doesn't right? land. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it was just it got like you couldn't it was like every other sentence he was like doing this and it was like i stopped inviting him to stuff i was like he needs to get laid or something because like yeah he just needs a release point or something yeah, for he a, needs he needs point. to actually know what it's like so that he can just like get that out of his system because like yeah. he's but not like, like but, that anymore he did outgrow it but like <laughs> good thank god because my other friend he just turned 50 and he doesn't say perverted <laughs> stuff he just says dumb shit and it's just <laughs> You know, hey, you know, can I use your bathroom? Twenty five dollars. That's his thing. He, okay, it was cute the first couple of times that, but literally, it's just like, uh, you know, hey, pass the ashtray. Twenty five dollars. Uh, can you know? Can I use your ice? Twenty five dollars. Okay, I just at one point I did. I just snapped on him, and it was like, I've been in therapy to like just try to like keep an even keel of all my stuff, and I and I just said. I didn't yell at him already. I was just like, "You're you're not funny." What do you mean? This this is how I said no. I said yeah. people. I said you just you're not funny. Yeah. I said it, it's not provocative. It's not ironic. It's not. I said it's just annoying. I said stop it. Yeah. Oh, uh, that would stress me out. Like I I'm very literal, and I have like I know some people say things, and they really truly do not mean them at all. But like yeah. for me, like all jokes have a little bit of truth in them. And sure. and I can't I cannot like even when people say that's not true for them, I don't understand how they could say something that isn't true unless they're being paid to be an actor. It just does, doesn't like, you know, does not compute. Right. So I don't I don't trust it. So for me, if I was in that situation, every time I asked them, 
for something, they told me it costs money, there would be a part of me that would feel like that, like they were a little bit inconvenienced, right? Yeah, and it's it, almost and it, just like saying, I, I, I'm having you here, I'm kind of tired, I want to go, you know, and they're kind of like laying the seeds of yeah. doubt and, and just like, yeah, like they don't want to come out and say, I want you guys to leave so I can go to bed. But it was just, yeah, okay, I get that. Yeah, and, and basically, like, there's something about when you're interacting with someone and you get the acknowledgement and sort of the acceptance. And it's, like, such a small thing to be like, hey, I'm going to use the bathroom or whatever. But just be like, yeah, sure, it's over there. And just yeah. that not, that niceness and the fact that he never gives that to you ever, that's, yeah. like, that, that would grate on me. Like, Oh, it does. It does. And it was just, like, I, I think I forget if I was the one who told you this on Twitter or what. But it was just one of those things where I don't normally lose my temper. When when I do, oh, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's a good one. It's a long fuse, as my daughter says, but great impact. And I forget what it was. And he he just kept saying stupid stuff and tr just trying to provoke me and just try to get <laughs> an argument. I'm like, I was married for 20 years. I'm done arguing. I'm done fighting. <laughs> I just want to hang out with like minded people and have fun. And then he was just like, why are you being so defensive? And I just, I, I screamed at him. I was like, I'm not being defensive. And I said it that loud where like everybody else kind of like stopped talking and learned at me. And I was just like, I know how that sounded. And it was like, I was just trying to <laughs> like, take the piss out of it where I was just like, all right. I, they just, but it was literally like somebody had just, you know, fell down the chimney and I was just like, yeah, I, I know how that sounded. But it's like, I'm really not defensive. I'm like, am, am I alone here? Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> you were you're like I am frustrated and you are not listening and that is annoying <laughs> yeah and it's like when you're talking to someone like that who has like zero empathy like you know people can say all day oh I'm sorry this is happening to you or this or that but when it was just you know when you try to confide in someone like this and they were just like huh let me tell you uh. you know you, you're going through pain <laughs> oh I can't even get up in the morning with it. Uh, okay yeah, I'd, I would be very tempted to pee in his shoes. Just... <laughs> I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I have like really weird like things I've never done, but yeah, I like, like, I like I think about it. Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like when I'm in the car and someone makes me mad, like I'm a very verbal rage driver. I don't, I'm not a physical rage driver. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'll be like, you know, I hope you get hit in the big toe by a dump truck. You know, like right? it's, it's just, it makes yeah, me feel did better. You, did you ever watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? No. Okay. I'll send you the link to that afterwards about a guy who grew up in Philadelphia and then moved to the suburbs with his roommate and how he <laughs> dealt with traffic and all that. You know, it, it's a lot funnier if they do it than me trying to tell you about it. But that's how I am when I'm behind a wheel too. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I've been I've been told I should watch that show. Yeah, it it is very good, and it's like I get it. We're all God's children, but <laughs> and sometimes you just wonder. I wish I was an only child. Yeah, <laughs> I have never heard that in the context of like the human population there before. <laughs> there you go. You feel free to use it. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up on motorcycles, so I, you know, oh. being in a car, it, it just, um, <laughs> it's just different. You know, you just kind of, I feel threatened all the time being in the car because yeah. you can't, you can't escape people and they, and I'm pretty like, I don't care if people like um, drive too fast or whatever. It's, it's about like basic courtesy, functional things that make sense, you know, like use your blinker, get up to speed yeah. and, Common you know. Sense. Get it's, out of the left lane if you're the only one there. You know what I mean? Exactly. Just, just like allow things to move. And that's where that's where I get, you know, like sa safety stuff or whatever. And then I'm just like, rah, 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 you know, mm -hmm. but uh, I also there are the days when everybody does everything right. And I try really hard to hang on to those because I think those are like rare, special and a little well, bit creepy. Far between, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it plus it's easy to hang on to the bad stuff, right? To remember the. The bad, oh. the bad driver. So I definitely like to to combat that by being like, sometimes people get it right, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, you know, whenever somebody lets me go 
you know, turn ahead of them. It's just always been like instilled to me, just give a wave, give yep. a thumbs up, you know, thank, you know, or just something, yeah, you know, to let them know, hey, that was appreciated, you know, that, that, you know, because who knows, maybe it's just one of those things down, you know, that just sets people off where it's just like, for years, I've been letting people go in traffic and nobody acknowledges me. And it's just, it's just one of those things. It's, you know, it's a butterfly effect. It's like, yeah. you, it doesn't, it literally takes zero effort. Even if you, you know, just give them the, the flashers you know, or whatever, yeah, yeah it's something or the polite two to the horn, and and that means a lot. I mean, you can you could spread that around just as easy as giving them the finger and shouting at them. You know, it's when is eh. exactly? Least, yeah, I'm, I don't... I'm not long for this world much longer. <laughs> Why should I spend it screaming at people? I've already had one heart attack. It's like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let some idiot who I don't know from Adam give me another one just right. why bother yeah i don't like i like all the like frustration it's like i always keep that to myself because i don't want to like feed into it and then i always make sure like even when i go to the grocery store or whatever like i'm not always the best at like wanting to make eye contact and socialize but i try to make sure that i say hi to the cashier and make them smile sure. or, or whatever you know it's like these like little things that yeah, like you said, it doesn't really cost anything. And I feel like no. sometimes I get more from it than they do. So, you know. Yeah. And it's it's a good way of being selfish, you know. It's not hurting anybody. And it's a, but that was the way I was raised, so. Yeah. I know. Wasn't I don't was I raised that way? I don't know. I feel like that's something that I decided to do on my own, but it's very possible that the example was established there and just wasn't given language or whatever mm -hmm. you know but my parents were bikers they weren't uh they weren't treated well in public spaces because they looked different you know long hair sure. and motorcycles are scary back then you know the whole easy rider association and hell's angels and all that so yeah um but yeah you know like i was raised that if you see someone on the side of side of the road you pull over see if they need help like get some gas from them i mean or whatever and now with cell phones it's different you pull over to help somebody and they get mad at you but you know until that until that took took off i you know i don't know how many people i like help them get gas when they ran out gas or give them a ride down to the you know gas station or whatever but um yeah now it's like i look and i think about it and i'm like should i pull over sometimes i'll slow down and like look for a thumbs up if it's a motorcyclist, you know, yeah. and they give me the thumbs up. Right. But um, yeah, I don't I haven't stopped in a long time. Even on my bike, like I would get behind cars that like their gas cap, the the cap was off. The door was and, open, yeah. Yeah. And we're stuck in traffic. So I'd go like tap on the window or whatever. And they would be like super defensive and angry and roll down yeah. the window. And I'd be like, hey, um, your gas cap is off. Do you mind if I just put it back on for you? And then they would just oh wow yeah thank you you know like instant like shift and you know shift and thing but they were all freaked out start start with like because we're so defensive with strangers now like sure, sure. it must be something bad <laughs> right it's too bad it's too bad Is that like i don't know i have this thing i don't i don't You'll, you'll notice I don't post about politics or any of that. Like, it's not it's not a thing. It's not my brand. I don't. You know what? Because you alienate half the people who you're friends with. Who well, don't know here's what, what I would alienate everybody. My perspective yeah. would alienate everybody. So yeah. <laughs> that's why I and don't. It, it's like, <laughs> if somebody asks me, I'll be like, yeah, OK, I'll vote this way or I'll vote that way. Um, this isn't point counterpoint. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. Twitter's a big enough cesspool as it is. I don't need to add to it. And it's just, you know, I'll sit there and scroll through and see what everybody else is writing. And I'm just like, I just, I, I just don't have that kind of negative energy anymore to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just, it's sad that it, it's, it's changed. I actually, I feel like if we were to take uh, the, some of the more extreme players that, that like sort of layer that we hear we, we're getting a lot of noise from them online because it's very clickbaity and um and take those people back in time to their 
15 years ago where they could see their see their attitudes and their behaviors now they probably a lot of those people wouldn't be real comfortable with what they're they're seeing no. you know no, that's for sure and i wish there was some way to like put that mirror up you know and uh just be like hey you know this is this has been manipulated and fabricated by outside things and has shaped all of us and you know it doesn't have to be like this we have a choice yeah we're li- leaning into it though <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah i just i just mute if people are posting a lot of that stuff i just mute and if it's not somebody i'm following i'm just block them and i just do my best to not see as much of it i don't mind some of the set like i saw a good clip on tiktok today with uh john stewart making fun of some stuff and that was pretty funny but you know most things i just don't don't want to know it was it was funny what it was when i did poli sci for a year and i was just like they asked to do that i'm like politics is like wrestling i said but at least the wrestlers have the decency to let you know it's fixed and it's fake yeah and they They'll admit their characters, whereas politicians always think that they have, you know, they will make you believe that you have your best interests at their heart and it's nothing could be farther from the truth. Yeah, I think the only place where you might see otherwise is very local stuff. Oh, yeah. And otherwise, it it's all like, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I see like the big, the major players, the high level politicians are basically bobbleheads are there to distract us from from what's you know that what's really basically going on which is yeah you know the the money making machine for special interests and stuff like that and yeah. it's we're just being distracted by by things um but it's you know i can't do anything about it i used to get really like upset which is part of the reason why i started filtering is because even as a teenager i would just like i realized we lived in a trap right that, yeah. y- you know, like we're forced to be a part of the economy. You can own property, but you still have to pay taxes, which means you still have to participate in the economy. There is no way to get away from it. And mm-hmm. that like that really upset me. I was like 12 or 13 and walked around stomping and slamming doors for weeks. I was pissed, like, you know, because I was like, I didn't I was already done with society, did not want to participate. I was like, I am on the wrong planet. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I want to go live in the woods and not deal with this shit. And they're like, nope, but you're gonna have to pay taxes. And I was like, the fuck? Like, (laughs) what? What? (laughs) So, um, yeah. And and so I had like, like my favorite bumper sticker when during that time was like, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. And, um, and I've just like always like kind of felt that way. But then I just got this point. I'm like, I can't, I can only control me. And how I impact my environment. I can't control all this bigger shit that's going on out there. So I'm just going to take responsibility for myself. Try to have as positive an impact on the people that I interact with at this level. Be responsible with, you know, like I try not to have too many plastic things. I mostly like wood, whatever, in the kitchen and stuff. Let's just try to be like environmental or whatever. Just do my best. And the rest of it just, you know, it's out there. I can't control it. Yeah. It just gets gets too bummery. Yeah, it just because it's just like, you know, you think that one person or whatever that you hang out is really cool. And then it was then they start talking about stuff. And it's like the only thing worse than an uneducated person is an educated person and tries to prove it to you. And it was <laughs> just, you know, I forget if it was Shakespeare or Mark Twain. Uh, it's best believed to be the fool and be silent than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. And that's, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just, it's just, I'd rather just sit on the sidelines and nod my head and be, oh, that's interesting. You know, yeah. I just, I can't. It's just, this is just, you, you lose points IQ wise. And just, it's, you, and, you know, people have their mindset. They're not going to change, they're not going to change their mind politically wise, religion wise anything at this age it's just you're just you're getting nowhere you'd you'd sooner talk to this empty coffee mug than to get anywhere with them yep. they, and and it's like people just want they don't want conversation they want conflict and i'm not down with that i just yeah there's like people are like addicted to stress or something it's it's yeah bizarre. they're not happy unless they're making other people miserable and it was i was telling a couple of my friends that on twitter they're getting harassed online it was just like well you smile too much it was 
why would somebody say that if you smile too much? Yeah. How could that offend someone? And it, we have toxic positivity. I'm just like, I wish, you know, it's yeah. like, why uh, would you I, want to be? I'd love I, to be positive all the time. I, I can't do it, but I'm not going to get on anybody else's shit just because they are. Right. And I hate toxic positivity, but smiling too much is not toxic positivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah t- like uh i i mean like i used to the area that i'm from there's a lot of russians and you know like um recently immigrated although not i guess it's been 20 years so a lot of them probably not but uh, the community's probably grown um but they they definitely have like a perception that americans smile too much and it makes us look dumb and uh-huh. um but that's because we have like the social you're supposed to smile when you greet a stranger or whatever. And I, I don't do that. Just, I I can, I can't, I can only smile if you make me smile. So yeah. I've never been able to just smile to stranger be, because I feel obligated to do so. Um, so I used to have Russian people come up to me and, and talk to me in Russian because I didn't do the smile thing. So they just assumed that I was, that I was Russian. Yeah, you were Russian. Yeah. Yeah. And I had studied enough of it that I was able to respond back in Russian that I didn't speak Russian. So <laughs> and they're like what <laughs> thank you for listening join me next week for the continuation of this conversation want to support my creative chaos and get access to exclusive content check out my patreon have a great week <laughs>